Hello, everyone. I would also like to welcome you in Work of Athens. And a warm welcome to the guys also that came from abroad, all the friends I've met in war camps around the world. So I will use this because unfortunately this thing doesn't work. I will be close to the computer. Let me okay, so I'm Mariana. I'm a product manager at Papaki and the core. And I also help with the uh, meetup, the WordPress meetup in Iraklio Crete. Um, so, what I will try to talk about today is uh, also the title of my presentation, why now is the time to focus on e-commerce. And I will try to address uh, these three parts, these three points uh, from a product perspective. Ah, I have to be here. Okay, so to begin with, uh, why e-commerce? Uh, actually, um, from like uh, e-commerce or, or um, trading um, has taken place throughout all uh, human recorded history, but from trading grains to actually ordering your favorite food and have it uh, delivered to you by Uber, uh, a lot has changed. There are industry leaders that uh, are talking about uh, how artificial intelligence uh, will disrupt every uh, type of uh, industry. And focusing on e-commerce, um, consumers already um, chat with bots uh, when ordering um, when shopping online. And um, generally, um, the market experts are, are um, estimating that shopping carts will disappear and that the products will be delivered to us in a predictive manner. For example, uh, you see an Insta uh, ad, you click on a jacket you like, and then a marketing automation tool uh, analyzes your actions and your profile, assigns you as a target customer of this brand, and uh, boom, you have this jacket delivered to you, probably by a self-driving car, for you to wear and try and decide later if you want to buy it. But okay, this is not going to be one of those talks. We're not at TEDx or Web Summit. So it's not about the futuristic um, future of, um, I don't know, uh, sh dead shopping carts. But what I will try to share with you today is uh, some uh, actually plausible, realistic stats and figures on what is going on in Europe and why actually it is the right time to focus on e-commerce. So in my opinion, shopping carts will not disappear. And actually, uh, chatbots and artificial intelligence, at least not for the next 10 years or so, will not replace uh, websites or e-stores. They will just take a place in the omni-channel behavior of the consumer. When we say omni-channel, uh, we mean that uh, a consumer is jumping, sorry if I'm talking too fast, <laughs> is jumping from channel to channel before he actually completes a purchase. For example, in Greece, one third of consumers search online and then buy offline. And this also uh, is the opposite. So basic boring stuff, sorry. Um, the number of people that actually have never been online is decreasing significantly over the years and the internet penetration is growing and we are lucky to be in Europe because the internet penetration is really high comparing to the rest of the world. But what is important for us is that, um, not internet penetration, but the direct effect that has in um, uh, internet usage. So, for example, um, there are million of new users, internet users, year over year. It's growing explosively. For us, the professionals, uh, the important is um, not only the number of people that go online, but the number of people who, by developing their digital skills, are entering our target audience as potential customers. So according to communication science, uh, we should be interested in the people that move from the basic operational skills to the strategic dis digital skills, which means the skills that people uh, use to achieve a personal or a business um, goal online. We are lucky to be in Europe, I think so, uh, because Europe actually supports these things and with uh, policies and programs, they try to develop and increase the digital skills of uh, European consumers. And that actually will help us eventually. So, Back to e-commerce, also e-commerce sales from business to retail sales are, go, are growing steadily year over year, 
and it's not, ex it's not expected to slow down. And also in Europe is going well, and even in Greece, although we have all this economic situation we're facing all these years, it had a growth of 80%, 8%, not 80, from 2015 to 2016. So e-commerce is going well. And um, who sells online? So small and medium enterprises. 99% of all businesses in Europe and, and in Greece are small enterprises. Uh, especially in Greece, um, microfirms, uh, we have the highest proportion of microfirms, which is uh, businesses with less than five people, and also Greeks are twice as likely to be self-employed. So uh, small and medium enterprise dominate the e-commerce side of, like, of the seller. And, but what do these SMEs doing online already? So most of them, they already have a website. And uh, they, but not all of them sell online yet. The, it, it's growing, uh, but it's like 80% of them just selling online. For us, does it mean that is a, there is an opportunity which is uh, still untapped and there is a lot, a lot of room uh, to still sell our services. And again, we have the support of the European Union I'm not go going to go through the small details and policies, but with this uh, business act, they are really supporting, they're pushing small businesses to grow in terms, they're helping them in terms of competitiveness, entrepreneurship, they're, fi they're helping to finance them. So the, those small brands are, will, get, um, will grow. Uh, we'll get, they're getting better and better. Uh, for example, did a review of the program, because not all programs work, and they saw that in many countries, uh, these small brands uh, recovered and actually they go to the results they had before the crisis. Not in Greece, uh, but we are getting there. Another important thing is that uh, even country code uh, domain registries are focusing on small brands. Everyone seems to focus on small brands. So I was in Brussels in early October in a panel discussion about the future of domain names and the new TLDs. And it was very interesting seeing if even this big organization is the, is the organization that sell, let's offer .gr, .es, .nl. We call them country code domain names. Focusing on small brands that are not yet online. Um, so the key takeaways of this uh, talk was that actually these small brands don't really care about domain names. It was really funny because it was a conference about domain names. But they care about their online presence. And the second part is that us as provider, like domain names, that's Papaiki, uh, we should uh, target those offline brands if we want to continue growing. But we cannot do that. I mean, we cannot go door to door and start uh, selling, I don't know, a website or a domain. The discussion was like that we should target you developers, agencies, designers that actually have a direct access to, to these customers in order to support you to, ac to actually uh, access them because we don't have access. So at the end of the day, the result was that, okay, this big organization will try to craft uh, co-marketing agreements. I don't know if, if everyone is familiar with that. But in simple words, they will assign money, budget. They will give money to us to support you to educate and to access these small businesses. So, back to e-commerce. Is that how, uh, how many of you are buying from outside Greece, I mean, outside your own borders, products or? Okay, many here, but actually it's only 18% of the European citizens. Congratulations, guys. And who, about companies, how many? Do, does anyone have like um, a company selling products abroad, like an e-commerce store? Okay, few. True story. Uh, because only 8% of companies actually sell abroad. And uh, this is what is the next uh, big thing that everybody is talking about. It's about cross-border. So small brands in Greece, maybe they are really excited when they explore the possibility of e-commerce, selling products online. 
creating store. But industry experts are, are already talking about uh, the cross-border explosion and the growth. Actually, it's, it has a 25%, maybe it doesn't mean anything to you, but it's a huge uh, number uh, in the industry of growth. And it's gonna reach like one trillion by 2020, which is a very huge number. And everybody's talking about it. So in an in e-commerce store, um, we are interested, like when somebody wants to sell, shipping is one of the big things that we, we focus on, like the, the small brand focuses on. So we see DHL actually publishing research reports about how small brands can benefit from uh, cross-border. And they actually highlight the main concern. The main concern of the personal buys online is uh, delivery time and delivery cost. And okay, they do it for their own purposes because they want to, I don't know, like express delivery, they want to promote that. But at the same time, they educate their customers, which are our customers too, by suggesting ways they can achieve that. So one of the ways, they have this big report with all of you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. One of the big, uh, one of the things that they suggest is that you should build a globally accessible but localized multi-language e-commerce store. So actually, they are pushing us too. And China also. China is like a growing e-commerce giant and uh, this really pretty guy here is the Bright CEO of Alibaba, which is the largest uh, uh, trading platform for small businesses. And he also wants every single small business to go on his platform and uh, start uh, selling to China. So he talks about a single digital market. Okay, it might sound a bit futuristic, but a digital single market, a global one, where every SME will have access to, on the same terms, uh, to sell. And he also highlights the importance of uh, applying policies and uh, helping small brands, helping young people. So everybody's pushing on that way. And again, in Europe, they make sure that this will work. Okay, I'm not a person that understands policies and actually they're very boring, but it's the base that, uh, be, the, on which we can build. And it's policies actually influence the behavior. So they're working on these things of digital single market. If they will make, they want to boost e-commerce in order to increase the, to boost the economy. So they're uh, working on that, on making the delivery very easy. So one of the major concerns also for small brands is the cost, the delivery cost. How to, what is the price? How to pass it to the customer to sell, I don't know, to Germany, etc. So they, make, they will make sure with, again, rules and stuff, uh, that uh, the quality of the delivery will be the same, a standard at least. So they will, checking, they will be checking uh, all the shipping carriers and that the cost will be affordable for everyone, also for the consumers and also for the, for the SMBs. They're also changing the rules to, to, for every person to have equal access. I mean, sometimes in some websites, when you change the, the country, also the price changes. I don't know if you've noticed. I've noticed that when I'm booking flights. So this will change. And they will also try to um, actually um, increase the trust of the consumer. So they're working also for us uh, to, to facilitate um, the growth of e-commerce. And lately, actually this January, they, they're gonna do a big change with VAT returns, which is what concerns the companies. So they will put some thresholds and they will make it easier for small brands to sell abroad as if they were sold online. And uh, for us, the important is that in 2021, this happens already for services, but in 2021, this will be applied to all kind of stores selling goods. So this will help them a lot uh, to go outside the borders. So, sorry for the meme. So what I'm trying to say here is that policies, big players, uh, they're all focusing on how to push uh, small brands to develop and on e-commerce. And for us, that means that more and more businesses will want to go online, more and more businesses will, will want to sell online. And so we need to choose a tool. Um, why WooCommerce? Um, first of all, it's a champion. 
and uh, it's the number one in our hearts. But also it powers already many stores, as you, may, as you already know, the thousand plugins, huge community to support. But it's also um, a canvas where everybody, no, no matter skill, can create depending uh, on, on his imagination and, and his technical background. It's also fully customizable. It will be very important with cross-border to be able to support all payment gateways, and it does already, or marketplaces, or languages. And also providers are helping with it. Most of hosting providers are already offering managed WordPress hosting uh, for years now, and now you, you see a switch to WooCommerce. So they're starting to offer optimized share hosting for WooCommerce, which might be just a landing page with the same plan, but they do it. Uh, or manage WooCommerce hosting. So we see that ser search results for WooCommerce hosting are also growing. <coughs> and as a provider, uh, we, and all providers that, ser that actually started selling managed WooCommerce hosting, they educate the customers. Customers are much more educated nowadays. And what I mean is that all these uh, drag and drop uh, website builder solutions or the free hosting um, uh, plans, limited free hosting we've been offering all these years, actually have, um, hel have helped in education in, on the education of customers on e-commerce requirements. So they're starting to understand that an e-commerce is not just a website. And uh, for me, WooCommerce is, um, is, is much more than a tool uh, because it allows to anyone no matter if he's a super tech developer or just a guy with some time and some basic skills to build a website for third party. And uh, actually this, is, this person is not your competitor and the customer he gets is not uh, your customer. Uh, Papaki will always hear stories about how people uh, struggling, especially in Greece, struggling with life and problems and they find, they find a way out in WooCommerce, actually a source of income. And uh, what I believe is with the open source, with WooCommerce, there is room for everyone, and there is a type of customer for everyone. Yeah. So uh, at Papaiki, we had, uh, we used to offer a um, website building solution that was quite bad, closed source, of course, very limited. And a year ago, we, we were forced to transfer them to a new platform, so we chose uh, WooCommerce. 150 customers or 200, transferring them to WooCommerce in 40 days. It was a great challenge and with no sleep and it was also Christmas. It was, it was interesting. So we went through many procedures, many problems. We solved them, we moved on. At the end of the day, we managed to transfer all these customers to a platform that wouldn't limit them. So then we asked them, how is it going? <laughs> how is it working for you? And, um, okay, they were, uh, most of them, they were happy for the options, but all of them, when we asked them what is the number one service you want uh, with your WooCommerce store now that is online, they said, we want developers. <laughs> we want developer hours because we don't offer that. Uh, I want this thing. I want this customization. How can I do that? Okay, our support was not ready for that. We are not developers, we are offering technical support. But the important thing is that the moment they shop is online, and that's what we took care of. It was just there, working, perfect. We also implemented plugins for them to be able to receive payments. The moment it's online, then the journey starts. So they need development. So, we come to the part of WooCommerce maintenance. What we see is that, uh, as a providers, uh, because sometimes as providers, when we offer solutions that are automated and stuff, uh, we are seen as competitors, but actually it's the opposite. Uh, no matter how easy we make it for the end customer to build a WooCommerce store, uh, pre-installed themes, pre-installed plugins, uh, settings, everything, demo content, demo products, everything. One click and you have your store there. No matter how easy we make it for them, they will always need uh, some kind of a, a developer, actually. Because A, uh, 
they only have time to run the business. We are talking about small businesses. This is, a, this is the fact in Greece and in Europe. So they will hardly have, hardly have ever time to do something else. And B, they will never have the knowledge because they are always busy with their store. So I, I wanted to share that with you, this information. So I'm moving too fast. I still have nine minutes and 45 and everybody's still awake. Yes. So where to focus next? always from a product perspective, okay? So, we've been talking a lot, I've been talking a lot with all these beautiful customers we transfer to WooCommerce, also with freelancers and friend developers about their struggles. And one of the big struggles is that, is the, actually the um, collaboration and the communication with the customer on a project. So freelancers like you, developers, many times need to wear the project man management hat, which is a totally different role for, of, from what you really want to do. Yes. So uh, our suggestion is that you should choose your tools early. Many of you are professionals already. You have everything set. But there are many also that are starting now, like a web designer girl I met before uh, in front of a booth. So to save time, you, need, you really need to have your tools ready from the beginning. And that means uh, like a tool to manage your work, which is for us is Trello. And uh, a ticketing system from the first day, from day one. Why not? Not email. There are plans out, uh, like available for, I don't know, $8 per month, which is not uh, at all expensive. And you have to be brave. As we said before, there are different customers. Uh, the, Normally, um, the lower educated, technically, customer would go to a cousin of a cousin, the friend of a cousin of Maria and, I don't know, my uncle from the village, and would say, I want a website, and can you build it for me? So then he will fail, apparently, and then he will start to look for some a little bit like better. And then he will, maybe he builds a WooCommerce store, and it's going to bring some money, and then, okay, now I need a more experienced guy because I want to sell to, I don't know, Germany. And then, okay, I need my marketing, so then I go to the agency. So this is a, a like a, a line, an education path, educational path of the, of the consumer. So you have to be brave uh, from the beginning, no matter how much you need the money or so, and rule out all the problematic customers for you because not everyone is your customer. And finally, um, providers are becoming very intelligent nowadays, so you can actually use tools you don't have to do everything by yourself, although we trust you that you can do everything, sysadmin, development, marketing. Uh, you can take advantage of some tools uh, that providers offer, so you can save time and focus more on, on the things you, you love doing, okay? So there are several things that nowadays are pretty automatic and quite smart. So for example, uh, you can take advantage of the WooCommerce updates. Providers are not are becoming yeah, smarter, as I said, in, in that. So uh, they use testing. They, just, they don't just uh, push uh, updates of plugins like that, and then boom, something breaks on your site, and you run, and your customer calls you. No, they use visual and, uh, or some of them, visual and functional testing. So they are able to inform you well ahead uh, about some plugin that is going to break the website. They even use human testing. So, for example, they even check what is going on in the market after a plugin has been, a new plugin release is, uh, is live. So, you can get the information that something will not work early in your email. Another new, kind of new tool that is uh, popular, becoming popular, is automated testing. We do that too, actually. So, we offer like um, health checks, we call it. Uh, that there are some automated tests that run in the background of the WooCommerce, and they check uh, every several hours uh, the checkout process, if it's working correctly, the cart, the product page, if it's okay, the home page. So it checks several things, and if something is going wrong, then it sends you an email and says, okay, look, there's something wrong here, you should uh, check it. And that's much better than um, a customer, your customer realizing that something is going wrong or realizing from customers that something went wrong after an update. And finally, uh, 
you can choose uh, some, some provide, whatever. You can choose um, optimized hosting for e-commerce or WooCommerce because probably they will, they, they will have some uh, server level cache, some customization that can support e-commerce uh, stores better. Uh, they will have more experience. They will have failed multiple times, disappointing customers, and they will, will, will have learned from that. And they can support these stores uh, in the peak times, like uh, Black Friday uh, and situations like that. And finally, a little bit of product thinking uh, is that um, we need to innovate in pricing, in the way we price, not only you, but also us. So for you, maybe freelancers, the important is uh, to price your hour because what, that's what is important for you. Uh, the time, the amount of the time you spend on a project. But is that the important thing also for the customer? I don't think so. I think we, sh we you should start basing your pricing strategy on a value metric. So a value metric is actually uh, something that brings value to your customer. So you base your pricing, pricing strategy on something that grows with your customer. Uh, that's e it's easy to understand. And um, that uh, actually makes you, um, not makes you, but puts you in a position to rethink yourself as a service provider. So, uh, for example, uh, as service providers, we, we offer more than one offering. You can take advantage of the tools we talked before and make tires, like offer tires. Uh, you should have the recurring revenue in your mind uh, to keep the customer because this is how service providers work, subscription based. Uh, you should go for maintenance uh, offerings from the first minute. I know some people already do it and you are really good at that, but there are some people that are new. So for me, uh, reinventing the way you price your customers can um, offer you mo much more in the long term. Okay. So to sum up, time is running out, smiley. Uh, so I, I, I believe that uh, e-commerce will continue to grow and you shouldn't uh, miss on that, especially cross-border because it's connected well with uh, WooCommerce and all the functionality it offers. And uh, I think you should, I believe you should uh, uh, use the automated tools actually uh, on your favor and put the price tag on the customer. And Innovation is here. Uh, the present feature offered by providers, I believe, are only the beginning of the innovation we're about to, to experience in WooCommerce building, hosting, and maintenance. There are people that ask Alexa how the apps are running in some booth outside. So you could also try that. Thank you. Sorry if I was talking too fast. It's my first time. Any questions? No, I didn't put a friend to ask me something I already knew. No? No. I thought about it, though. Okay, I wouldn't be shy. Do, do we know the current uh, number of uh, WooCommerce users around the world? Usage, uh, do, we, do we know? Well, actually, it's 42% uh, yeah, of all e-commerce stores yeah. Yeah, on the entire internet, which is growing all the time. It's a big percentage. Thank you for the question, Douglas. Yeah, You're so nice. Sometimes. Okay, thank you, guys. <laughs> no, no, 42% is globally on the entire internet. But it's also good for uh, the, the percentage of the WooCommerce usage in Greece is high, too. Uh, no, I don't remember. But I can search it. I will be outside. About safety on WooCommerce, about... Um, security. Yes, yeah, security, yes. Well, security is, you know, a hot topic with open source. And uh, it's something there. Updates should be done. It's an open source. Everybody's contributing. Security issues occur all the time. Uh, for us, I mean, uh, for me as a provider, we try to make it easier, make the life easier about it uh, with the updates and stuff. But security issues are there, and that's why we have the update updates. 
But what do you mean exactly? Yes. Information being hacked. And stolen, yes. That, that also happens. That's why we have all these security releases do and updates. Some, do you need an add-on, something extra? For security? Yes. There are plugins you can use or, well, the security is, I mean, it's in different parts. It can be on a server level, like your server should be secure. And then it's on, a, on the WooCommerce level, on the WordPress level. Uh, you should have your updates on time. And maybe there is some plugin, strains, that has a hole, I don't know. So in open source, it's like that. Security has many aspects. Because there is new laws, very strict coming. Yeah, the GDPR, security. you mean? Yes, correct, yes. OK, yeah, the GDPR, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, they're coming next May, and this is a hot topic. Everybody discuss about it. In terms of, for example, as a provider, because every company needs to handle that in a different way. For us, we hired some experts that are working on it. And we will make sure, for example, that all the data of our customers are secured in the European Union and stuff. But do you have a specific question or something? Like no, no, it's just general. I'm just trying to build something. Yeah, 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 okay. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you for trying to build something. In case anybody missed it, we do have talks about GDPR later on, right? We have talks about GDPR later on, on in track B from, uh, from special specialists. From are you the entrepreneur? Speak the truth. <laughs> okay. We never see the show. We have a question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, was it challenging to manage all the pool of customers com coming from the Scrooge store when it was closed? <sighs> that was a painful story. And it was Christmas. Again? And yes. <laughs> it was very challenging. Everybody was working on that, but the, the, it was uh, difficult because you know the Scrooge store was a closed. Uh, it was it, it was a closed pl platform. We had to um, uh, build scripts to be able to take the data from there and then to manipulate, change them. The developer is somewhere here that did it, and then upload them to WooCommerce. And then the images were different because the sizes were different there, and the, the framework is different on WooCommerce. And the payment gateways, we implemented plugins to uh, assist and uh, the connection with the uh, Scrooge store. It was long. Let's say, yes, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was difficult. It was a challenge in the beginning. Okay. The, the developer who wrote the script is invited as a speaker at any time. Yes. Okay. Yorgos, <laughs> where are you? Thank you for that time. <laughs> So yes, it's true, it was difficult but, uh, and challenging, but um, in the beginning, you know, you're not resistant to change. You know, they got crazy. They were like, okay, it was bad. It was in liquid language and I couldn't even change a color, but it was working and it was fast and it was dead, dead, dead. And then after three months, four months, they were like, oh, I like that I can change that. No. Ooh, I can do that. Wow, no, with bad. one plugin, I can put coupons and stuff. So it's also education, you know? So they needed their time and then they got excited. And then I was having calls because I was talking directly with some of them. I was having calls, hey, Mariana, you know, this is so cool. And I did that and I did that and I did that and I did that. And now after one year, and that's why I say WooCommerce has future. After one year, they're like, okay, Mariana, I need a developer. I was like, okay. Mm. Okay, yes, can you suggest someone, blah, blah, blah. So th I thought that was the important part mm -hmm. because we have direct access as providers to end customers that don't know much, but we guide the decisions by offering them Mana's WooCommerce hosting. Mm -hmm. And then they become more educated and that also helps the community and the developers and the agencies and stuff. They're not ready to go to a, a super tech uh, um, developer or agency from the beginning. They want to go through the painful process of learning. So mm. it works for everybody at the end of the day. Sorry, I'm talking too much. No, no, we like it. <laughs> Other do, questions? Do, do you have, oh. Yeah, let's get the mic. Please don't be a technical one. Please don't be a technical <laughs> How are we going? Hello. How are we going to convince, Hello, it's me. Uh, to convince someone to change to WooCommerce from uh, another platform? Learn? Or to build in uh, WooCommerce. How about? 
how long to was? Or how, you... how, we, how we're going to convince someone to change to WooCommerce from another platform well, if he has an opinion about? Well, you're, sup you're the decision maker. I mean, do they come and they say, I want a, a new store on Wix or something? Yes, no, they're like, ah, I want a new store and I don't know what to do and can you help me? And this is, it, it, I think it goes like that, no? Do they, do they get to choose? Yes, the many customers choose, um, in Greek, uh, reality, choose his cart or whatever they heard about it, or Magento, they have an opinion about it. So we're bound to convince them, to convince them to choose WooCommerce. Look, How? They're, they're all, like, like we say, there's always going to be somewhere cheaper than you, than us, for example. So we're going to fight for that customer. If you have experience in building with Magento and stuff, yeah, you should work with that. Eventually, maybe he will realize that WooCommerce is a better tool. I don't have a lot of experience in Magento. About the price. Huh? About the price, as you said. It's cheaper. Yes, I, I'm, it was just an example of what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, this is the role of, you, you play a role also of educator. When you have the choice to select your tools, then you choose it. When you, have the, when you don't have a choice and you, you need this customer, if you need him, you can work with that. You can give him suggestions. You can give him examples of how WooCommerce works. If you're going to also sell uh, maintenance, I mean, if you're going to uh, continue supporting this customer after, then maybe you should tell him, you know, this is the way to go. And of course, for me, WooCommerce is really a very, really, a really cool tool for everyone. Flexible. But not for everyone. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.